by volume, a lot of people would tell you that the 32 ACP has killed more animals than any other. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go back to our roots and do a little bit of a history of video, this time on the 32 ACP. When I started researching this topic, I was actually blown away by some of the facts that I discovered. Number one was that this was John Moses Browning's first pistol and first pistol cartridge. Didn't know that. He developed the 32 ACP in what would be known as the FN 1899 pistol. Now, it went pretty quickly into the dustbin of history, and most people would recognize the 32 ACP debuting in the FN 1900. The 1899 needed to be redesigned with a different handle and fix the ergonomics, and once they did, it became a very, very iconic firearm because the FN 1900 was the first one to use a slide. Kind of an interesting little fact in case you're ever on that millionaire show. So with the 32 ACP, what you saw was an explosion in its popularity. Another iconic gun in that caliber would be made by Colt, the 1903 model. A lot of people I'm sure watching the channel are very familiar with what that looks like, but we'll pull a picture of it in case you're not. Almost immediately, countries in Europe and worldwide started to develop and adopt the cartridge as a police and military sort of weapon. In fact, in 1929, Walther made the PP chambered in 32 ACP. Now, if you're not familiar, this is a PPK, right? The PPK is actually a compact version of the PP. The PP was larger, a longer handle, and be more of what most people would recognize by size as a duty weapon. As time rolled on, many, many, many manufacturers used the 32 ACP as the basis for their weapons. In fact, by volume, the 32 ACP has been chambered in more firearms than any other, including 9mm. That, that was a fact that just blew me away, but it's true, because they were making so many of them in the 20s all the way through now. Interestingly enough, the PPK by Walther suspended its 32 ACP operation in 1999 after 70 years of manufacture. Kind of an impressive run if you think about it. The 32 ACP is obviously 7.65 millimeter by 17 millimeters long. Doesn't generate a ton of power for most people's liking, say around 160 to 180 foot pounds. Not a lot compared to nine millimeter. The cartridge is straight walled and it's also semi rimmed. And that's kind of interesting because you can use it in a revolver fairly easily. So once again, it had a lot of applications across many different types of handguns. And there are some rifles chambered in it as well. Back to numbers. By volume, a lot of people would tell you that the 32 ACP has killed more animals than any other because they used it in a weapon system called the Greener Humane Cattle Killer. It became very popular amongst veterinarians back in the day to euthanize animals with this greener system that used the 32 ACP. They would actually use it on cattle directly in the front of the skull. So, by volume, there's a ton of them. And as far as lives claimed, furry ones at least, very, very respectable caliber. One of the calibers that helped the 32 ACP become not so prevalent was obviously the nine millimeter. Militaries and police departments around the world, once the technology caught up to the cartridge, decided that the Luger and some other models, because they had more power, retained the accuracy and were still shootable, that it was desirable just to have the extra boost in power that the nine millimeter provided. So the 32 ACP was kind of crowded out, even though for a while it was very popular amongst police and militaries. In fact, the German military before World War II was issuing it to officers, their pilots, and then it was just gradually phased out by the more powerful nine millimeter cartridge. One of the things I think that's gonna be kind of interesting for people to know is you can still get modern weapons in 32 ACP. One of my favorite ones 
is the Keltec P32. It's a pocket gun, micro gun, and is completely shootable as compared to, say, a Smith & Wesson bodyguard or the small pocket Ruger, which has a ferocious amount of recoil impulse for most shooters, even very experienced ones. Most of the guns that size are designed to be carried a lot and shot a little. That's really not true with the kel P32. You can have a lot of fun with that little guy and still have the concept of deep concealment. Later on, we're gonna do a video in our normal FBI setup and see how effective the 32 ACP is by modern standards at neutralizing a threat. I think we're gonna find that based on when it was designed and the barrel lengths that they typically get shot out of, it'll probably do okay. I certainly wouldn't wanna get hit with it at any range, but up close, I imagine it'll do just fine. Related to modern carry, besides the kel Beretta still makes the Tomcat, which is kind of a unconventional sort of design, but very popular amongst people that care to learn the sort of nuances of how that system works. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little brief walk back in time and see how exactly the 32 ACP became the most by volume popular handgun in the world. And join us next week where we try it out on the range and put it through its paces with our FBI testing.